Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for selecting my channel to watch. Hopefully, I provide you with some entertainment, education, and maybe show you something you haven't seen before and you find interesting. Because, to me, that's the fun part. And I like showing things that I find very interesting. Uh, and you see before you a pen worthy of being held up by a crab spinning on a turntable. Uh, this pen was sent to me. And I did not solicit it. Uh, someone offered to send me a pen, and I generally will say yes. Not all the time, but generally. And this one has surprised me, so hopefully it surprises you too. And just to, to put things in perspective, because occasionally viewers will ask, uh, no, I'm not promoting a pen because of any type of monetary compensation, and that includes just getting a pen. Uh, that didn't cost me any money. but And I have pens that I've gotten that I have not reviewed because I didn't think they were worthy. So speaking of being worthy, we're going to let Mr. Crab spin around a little bit. We'll zoom in a little bit to better appreciate this resin. And we're going to let Mr. Crab give you a wink and let's explore the pen. What's nice sometimes is when a pen does come in a nice giftable presentation box. And that is definitely an interesting saying. It will give you the Google translation. And I think, you know, the Google translation probably loses some idioms. It will give you a close up of the Chinese. There's a number of my viewers that can read Chinese fairly well. So you might have some other suggestions as to what that means. But again, it's something a little different. Something to pique your interest, to have you be curious. And I can sometimes be very curious. The pen slides out. And it's a fairly sturdy cardboard coffin here that the box is in, little elastic strap. Yeah, you know, did have a condom on it, which we can give you the sound of that cellophane. But I think we just need to visually look at this pen. Got some decent light coming in. So this is what I would call a ribbon resin. And uh base color is kind of a very light blue and I find it to be a very attractive combination and with all of these pens every pen is going to be different well, compared to some other ribbon resins a little bit later the cap comes off in about one and a quarter turns and we'll see a nice number six nib it's branded and it's a medium. I like mediums. And that section is also nice to say material. The pen has a good feel to it. And that to me is, is always nice. When the pen feels good in your hand, it has a nice weight to it. And we're thinking it might post. And it does, but it makes for a long pen and a little bit back weighted. It's fairly sturdy, so it's going to stay on once you post it, but it's not a pen that I would generally post, but it feels good. So we're going to give you those dimensions and the weights in a nice visual manner, and then we're going to continue on. So my curiosity was tweaked by the symbol that Tianzi uses. It looks kind of like a snake or a cobra. But when I did my research, Tianzi is a mountain range, very picturesque. Here's some images that I found in China. 
And apparently there might be some snake festival, but not certain how it relates. But I do think it's an interesting logo and an interesting name. So here's a few pens in what I would call that ribbon resin. I threw this yellow one in because it kind of exemplifies what's going on here, where this is the base resin is, is a yellow tinge. So the ribbons take on a little bit of that color and the ribbons have a variation because the closer they are to the surface, the less yellow resin there. Just like the blue affects the white ribbon. So I think both of these are white ribbons. Here's a Wong Kai, which I think is the first pen I got in this resin. And I really enjoy it. Wong Kai has come out with some new colors. And of course, I ordered one and here it is. It's in the state, so I should have it relatively shortly. And the next resin I got into was Smog by Pen BBS, which is the white ribbon in a clear plastic. So you don't see any color. So here's a light green, a yellow, and a blue. And then I, I really enjoy dark paint, where the ribbons are uh, a black. And then up here is, uh, I think this is Misty Mountains. And this is, again, another uh, interesting change on it, where those ribbons are kind of on the blue side. I think the resin is, uh, is clear, but the color really comes across fairly nicely. We're going to zoom in a little bit and then move on. So I'm going to try a little bit of a pan so you can appreciate these interesting, what I'm calling ribbon resins. Some people might call it a finish. I find it a very attractive resin and all of these pens are very sturdy, very well made, and I've enjoyed writing with them. So exploring ribbon resins, I would be remiss if I didn't show these two oral eyes. It's the 019 model. And again, a little bit of a different take on it. So the resin is a little bit more translucent than transparent. A blue ribbon and a yellow base and a Another blue ribbon could be the same type of ribbon and more of a green base with some nice pearlescence in it. So just two other similar form factors that I find visually very nice. So if you wanted to compare the Tianzi with, I think the closest pen that I know to it is the Pen BBS 309. They're both piston fillers, but this is just a bigger pen, more substantial pen. You know, a bigger finial. And of course, I got the smog version, which I showed earlier. And this one, the piston works really nicely. It hasn't stuck. Uh, the 309 seems to have an issue with piston sticking, so I generally keep it down a little bit. So when I first turn the blind cap, it pulls it up. Of course, when you're full of ink, that might be more difficult. I find the piston on the Tianzi to work very well. It's very smooth, and this larger diameter, you're going to get a little bit more ink in here. It's just, uh, I think, aesthetically done well. A little bit of uh, a design element on that uh, cap band. And it is identified with the brand of the pen. So here's as much as I'm going to take the pen apart. And I pulled the nib and fee just to see how easily it would pull. And there's a nib collar. And I like it the fact that it has two O-rings, similar to what Pen BBS uses. Your standard injection molded plastic feed, your standard number six nib. It's a substantial nib. It feels good in the hand. Certainly nice clean markings on there and a nice amount of medium tipping. The section which unscrews has a nice o-ring at the end which is also very typical of the design. Nice thick walls, very nice done, uh, nicely done. And you may ask well, if I have to take it apart to clean it, well you unscrew the blind cap and you'll see something in there that looks a little bit like you would find on a pelican or a twisby or other things and here's a wrench that i've gotten 
It's a wing sung wrench for the 699, which came in both piston and vac filler, and it fits that just right. So it's 7.7 millimeters. So you could just turn this, unscrew it. I'm not going to do that because it works really nice right now. It feels like it's well lubricated. There's no screw holding in the finial. The finial is threaded into the top of the cap. It's hard to catch the threads. You can see a little bit of them there. So if you need to, you could take the cap apart by unscrewing that top finial. So that's where we're at. We're going to select an ink, ink it up. So one of the reasons why I pulled the nib and feed is many, many years ago, one of my early pen shows I went to, I uh, bought a Franklin Christoph pen. And you buy the pen, it does not have a nib in it. So as you go down the table and pick your pen, then you go to the end of the table, wait in line for Franklin Christoph to tune the nib. And one of the first things that they do is they wipe the nib down with a soapy water solution and rinse it. And that's what I did here. And they were using Yovo nibs, so they were using what's considered to be an upper quality nib. So obviously I do that with all my nibs. I do some type of flushing or I pull the nib and feed it just makes for a consistent writing experience when I do ink. So you may have said this TNZ nib assembly looks very familiar and you would be correct. It matches up perfectly with the Moon Man and the Moon Man screws into the section. So you have a nice source of nibs if you're not happy with the TNZ. You could put in a Moon Man. So that's uh, interesting. A gin hat wouldn't work. Um, other Chinese pen makers all have different versions, just like Bach and Yovo do, but Moon Man and Tianzo use the same nib collar for their nibs. Well, I think it's time to talk a little bit about value. So I put together these pens, which are all in the $40 price range. And yes, this is a 309, but it's in Aurora finish. So pen BBS pens vary considerably based on the finish, the resin, the color, however you want to describe it. And Aurora is one of the more expensive ones. Here's two Canrite Heritages, which are piston fill, but not to the same quality as the piston fill and the Tianzi. And here's two Viziers, which I've recently reviewed. So originally, I thought the Tianzi was a little overpriced, but after using it for a while, comparing it to my other pens, I think it's priced appropriately. It feels more substantial in the hand than a 309 does, and, and more than the Heritages do. Uh, it's equal and comparable to the Viziers, not quite as big, but certainly comparable. So I just put these together, like I said, that are in that $40 price range. So you can get an idea of what that value might mean to you. So what ink to put in to the TNZ? Well, this ink called out to me. I haven't used it in a pen yet. Uh, it's interesting. I didn't realize that these are also branded bottles by Trommel. So this is a nice blue. I think it has a little bit of green in it. And it does have some red sheen. Not as much as Volga River or Voltaic Arc. And here's the chromatography, and you can see where that green comes in. And then you got blue and really dark blue. Nice combination. No water resistance. The ink runs away from the water. So I got a very full fill. I went up and down three times, and the third time when I pulled up the ink, I did it very slowly. Because if you pull it up fast, you'll get some cavitation. The other thing was, is with those O-rings, you don't get ink here that shows up in the section between the nib collar and that section. With a clear section, some people find that not acceptable. So with an O-ring down here at the bottom, when you put it in the bottle, ink doesn't work itself up there. And there's an O-ring here at the top where it screws into the section. So therefore, the ink is contained where it should be. And of course, that O-ring at the top of the section just seals up very well. And I did put silicone grease on all the threads and all the O-rings, just a little bit, 
just enough. And yes, I do have a fair amount of ink on my fingers, but such is the life of a fountain pen nerd. This is a very smooth medium steel nib. You get a little bit of feedback, but on this paper that's not unusual and the feedback is fine. I think this is a nib that will slowly work itself in. You can accelerate that by doing some smoothing, but I've decided not to do that. I may do that after this video. So that's definitely a medium line. It's a generous medium line and that puts down a decent amount of ink and I like the color because it smells smooth properly. Let's rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.3. It gets one check for the build, the construction, the feel, the look, and I'm going to give the nib a check too. I mean, it's not an exceptional medium nib, but it's certainly a good one. And it's certainly one that I enjoy writing with. This is the adventure that we've gone on. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little journey, the exploration of the wide world of pens. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you have a great day. You enjoy the pens that you own or the pens that you may own. Then as always, I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. If you reach the end, pen starts up right away. And we're going to say bye. I've got a lot more to go. A lot of stuff and content for your viewing entertainment. And yes, the nib got off the paper. <laughs>